Hi, and this is Bob Cooper from HelpMySquashGame.com and yes, I am wearing a visor. This is called a big eye. Very useful if you wear glasses when you play squash, particularly um, if you don't wear contact lenses. So check this out. And people ask me, what should I wear in terms of eye guards? And this is what I would recommend to you. First of all, always pick a visor type of eye guard. When you take something that fits the eye, tends to steam up and get sweaty. As soon as you wear these eye guards, you'll find, and, and they steam up, you won't want to wear them. And I'm desperately trying to get you to want to wear eye guards because it's safe. I'm really thinking of your senses today. So when you pick your eye guard, make sure you've got a visor, you have an adjustable earpiece so that what happens is you can make those eye guards fit and make sure that they hang away from the top of your head when you're playing. The other thing is keep them clean. You'll never want to wear dirty eye guards who drive you nuts. But I do want you to wear them. So if you don't own them, it's going to cost you maybe 30 bucks. And 30 bucks is cheap in comparison to an eye. Now here's a training tip for squash players who have hearing as their first sense. You'll know it's your first sense because if you love listening to music all day long, you know that hearing is a very strong sense for you. Squash players need to have their eyes turned on and they need to have their feel turned on. And if they've got hearing as their first sense, here's a training tip that you could do in your training to try and lower that first sense and turn up the others. Use earplugs. Use them for a month and find out what it feels like. Then when you go in your match and you take the nut out, what you'll find is your sight has been turned up a bit, your feel has been turned up a bit, and your hearing has actually not been the dominant sense. Try it. Now you know I'm always trying to show you great resources that you can use and this one I've been waiting for for about six months. I ordered it on Amazon and it's Greg Wells PhD's book on super bodies. Um, it talks about peak performance secrets from world-class athletes and it's got some great stuff in it. It's so simple. He's got 1% tips on how to help your body. He's got the training laid out in beautiful sets. I'm telling you, this book is really, really, really worth getting. He's, Greg Wells is a, is a great resource and he's worked with world-class athletes for, I don't know, 20 years. And now it's time for Ask Bob. And I got a um, question in from Rebecca who said, when should I restring my racket? How do I know if I should restring it? Simple. First thing is, is a string broken? Honestly, in squash, the stringing end of it is not so important. So for sure you restring it if the string's broken. If you start to see some fraying on the strings, then look at that and just because you don't want it to break in a really important match, go and get it restrung. As for the tension, most of the time the racket will actually have it on the side of it. So all you have to do is ask the, the pro shop that you go to to um, check it and put normal tension in it. Lastly, what should I restring it with? I would restring it with either something like Super Nick XL or you can restring it with something like Ultra Nick 18. When you see a number 18, what it actually means is the string is a little thinner uh, the higher the number. So the, thinner, the, the higher the number, the thinner the gauge, the more responsive the, the string. But in truth, I would restring your racket when it starts to feel very, very flat, when the strings are moving or when the string's broken.